Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, machaba, mori mori wanji, namaste, jambo. Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted and so very honored that you join us in our mission to help all families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to tell all of your family and friends about the show. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app. On Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Stitcher Radio, wherever you find your podcast. Join us once again from the beautiful state of California. Our guest is returning to the show to celebrate her brand new picture book. It is gorgeous and it's called Zora's Seashells. Please welcome back to the show, Helena Kuri. Hey, Helena, how are you? Doing really well, Jed. It's so nice to speak with you again and to speak with the audience. It is, del- you know, one of the things, Helena, that I'm so grateful for, and, and there are so many things in my life that I'm grateful for, but since I started this podcast, I've developed friendships with so many different authors, including you, and it is just, yeah. it's it's just a real blessing, and it's so neat to be able to come together and talk about kids' books and talk about the conversations families can have around kids' books. And, um, yeah, it's just a really cool thing. I totally agree. You know, even though we've never met in person, I feel like you're one of my friends, and it's always a pleasure to chat about kids' books. It's such a friendly community, one of the things I love about it. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us all about Sora's Seashells. Sure. So this is my fourth book. And it is a delight to look at. So I hope you'll get to look at a a copy from your local library or from a bookstore. So Sora Seashells is about a girl with a unique name. And she gets teased about it a little bit at school, about her quote-unquote strange name. And thanks to her grandmother, she learns to appreciate her name. She learns the meaning of her name. She learns to appreciate it. And then she actually even gains the courage to stand up to bullies. And um, it's really inspired by my own personal experience because when I was a kid, my name actually was not Helena. It was a different name. And I got teased pretty relentlessly um, almost every day about it. And so one day I asked my parents, please change my name to something that sounds a little more easy to pronounce. Um, because I had a Korean name before I became Helena. Ah. Well, as somebody who grew up with a very unique name, um, mm-hmm. I can appreciate a lot of, of what you went through. My name was in Korean, but there, there weren't. In fact, I didn't. I don't think I met my another person named Jed until I was in my 30s or 40s. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I, I certainly can relate to getting teased and name, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and when I was growing up, there was a, a very popular TV show called The Beverly Hillbillies, and that yes. was one of the characters was there. And there was a song that mentioned the characters. <laughs> so I heard that song very often. Um, but uh, oh, that's it, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So. It's really, you know, as I'm looking back now, I'm looking back and I'm thinking, oh, the third graders, the fourth graders that I went to school with, the first graders who are all Bobby and Richie and Tommy and John. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a really weird name and I guess it kind of makes sense now. The adult me looks back and says, "Eh, okay, it makes sense that they would, you know, call attention to it. Um... But it doesn't. That doesn't make it any easier for the first grader with the unusual name or the unique yeah, name. That's true. And one of the when I whenever I talk about this book to a crowd, one of the um, questions I get is, "Well, do you have any advice for anybody who's being teased about their name or being teased about anything really?" And my advice would be this: You know, we've all been there. You're not alone. As Jed mentioned, and as I've mentioned, we were teased as kids too. And it's only one moment in time, and that time will pass. 
and that'll all eventually go away. It's really hard to endure while you're experiencing it, but what you have to do is focus on the good things in your life, the people who love you, and the people who treat you like a gift. And that's one of the things that Sora learns through the course of this story. She learns that um, her grandmother suggested that her parents name her Sora because Sora means seashell in Korean. And finding a beautiful shell at the ocean is like receiving a wonderful gift from our planet. And so she learns that she is like a gift. And I want everyone listening to know that you are a gift to the people who love you. And so even if you might be a little bit insecure about the things people tease you about, just know that everyone goes through this. Everyone goes through being picked on at some point in their lives, but you are still a gift. You know, that is great advice. And it's advice that I had heard. It's advice that I've probably shared with others, um, certainly mm-hmm. advice. I can, I can actually hear my grandmother. So I, I'm imagining that's something you heard from your grandmother. It's absolutely something that I would have heard from my grandmother. I don't know if kids are hearing that that much now because I think I, what I'm hearing more often is parents are running into schools and like demanding this, this must stop and – Tell the kids to stop bullying my kids, and which is a good message. Kids shouldn't be teasing each other and shouldn't be bullying others. But I'm not sure if parents going in there and kind of fighting the fight is the best alternative. I I, I don't know. I'm kind of... Yeah. I uh, mean, yeah, I know what you mean. I'm torn about that, too, because when I was growing up, we didn't have such heavy involvement of parents as we see nowadays at schools. It's a wonderful thing for parents to be so dedicated and so involved. But, you know, there's a fine line between letting kids kind of go through childhood and experiencing some things that I think most kids experience, and then also balancing it out with, well, what's too much? What At what point do um, adults have to step in to stop bullying and to stop teasing and that sort of thing? Because, you know, unfortunately, one of the things that, a lot of kids love to do is to pick on each other. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember wherever I went when I was a kid, whether it was, you know, Disneyland's very close to here. If there weren't any grownups around and we were standing in line somewhere, kids would just pick on each other. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's a weird hat or just whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a common trait among kids, unfortunately. But hopefully um, through... Uh, learning with their teachers and through their parents and librarians and educators, kids will learn to be kind to each other. And that's one of the things I wanted to address with this book, which is, you know, why don't we try to increase kindness in this world instead of increasing meanness? Because Mm -hmm. there is already so much meanness. So try to uh, work in a little bit of kindness into your communities and into your social circles. Yeah. I think... I, 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 we, we've had a number of conversations, and one of the things that's always impressed me and, and impressed me about your stories is that there's a real connection with your family and the way yeah. you grew up. And it sounds, you know, from what we've ta- spoken about, there was a lot of challenges your family experienced coming here as immigrants from Korea. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so a lot of obstacles that they had to overcome but they did it with a lot of grace and lots and lots of love. You may not have had all the things that your classmates had, but you didn't lack for love from what I can remember. That's absolutely true, Jed. And I'm glad you mentioned it because, you know, as a child of immigrants and as a kid who didn't grow up with a lot of money or a lot of stuff, you know, when I watched TV and saw images of kids with their own rooms or kids with you know, boxes full of toys at home. I realized early on that my family was a little different. We didn't have that much stuff. But you know what? I didn't feel like I was lacking because you're right. There was a lot of love in my family. And also, this is really important for kids. We used our imagination Mm -hmm. to play a lot. And so we could literally imagine that the apartment building, the courtyard, was somewhere inside of a castle 
or there was a little wooded area near the apartment, and we could imagine that it was an enchanted forest. And because we let our imaginations run free, it felt like a very rich childhood. Mm, mm, I'm, I'm, I, I think that that's one thing. I'm, I'm hoping that all the screens and all the entertainment that kids are exposed mm-hmm. to and you know, the things that we couldn't even imagine that we're able to see on a screen now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I hope that that doesn't hurt our young people's imaginations. Yeah, I know it's a big, big concern because so many kids and grown-ups too are stuck to the screens, whether mm-hmm. it be the phone or iPad or computer. And it is a big concern because watching something on the screen is called passive entertainment and what that means is you're not really exercising your brain all that much you're just soaking up whatever's coming on screen and you're just you know digesting it in a passive way whereas using your imagination is a very active thing because you have to actively imagine um, cool things you have to use your brain to conjure up fairy tales or Imagine, um, you know, fairies or imagine dragons or dinosaurs. So it's a huge difference. And I, I'm with you, Jed. I hope that um, kids will try to exercise their imaginations more, especially, especially if they, if they want to become storytellers or writers or even artists. The imagination is the number one tool. So you have to exercise it in order to be a good writer or a good artist. Yeah. Absolutely. Speaking mm-hmm. of artists, the art mm-hmm. in Sora's shells, seashells, mm-hmm. uh, it's absolutely beautiful. All the all the art in all your books are are, are beautiful. Mm-hmm. We, we they're, they're such talented illustrators. It's, it's yes. just amazing. Uh, but this is the first time you've worked with the two illustrators that contributed to this book. That's uh, right. It, it sounds like there was a kind of a different or a special relationship with these illustrators. Yes. So the publishing company, which is the company that made the book, Candlewick Press, they actually selected the two illustrators. And the illustrators' names are Stella Lim and Ji Hyuk Kim. They actually don't know each other. They were selected because they're both um, excellent at watercolors. And what's special about uh, watercolors is that you just need a little bit of paint. You add water and you can create something huge like the ocean or uh, the beachscape sand so that's why stella and g were selected as artists and they're both located in south korea which is where my family originally came from and so um i'll tell you actually what my korean name used to be it was heyoon heyoon so i remember when i stepped into kindergarten my name was heyoon and so a lot of kids and teachers had a hard time pronouncing my name and I remember one day I was walking across the school courtyard and some kids started yelling hey you hey you and I was wondering are they trying to say my name and I looked and they were laughing and pointing at me and yes they were making fun of my name and you might not think it's a big deal because hey you and hey yoon sound very similar but when you hear that day after day after day with kids laughing and pointing at you, it doesn't feel very good. Mm-hmm. And that's why when I went home, I asked my parents to change my name to, to make it sound more American. And so there was a woman in our building named Helen. And so they just added a name, uh, uh, the letter A at the end of Helen, and I became Helena. But now I use the name Heyun as my middle name because I came to learn the meaning of Heyun. It means intelligence and grace in Korean. I didn't know that. My dad told me this. And the reason why they named me Heyun is because one of his favorite animals is the tiger, which has a lot of intelligence and a lot of grace. So they named me after a tiger. And I thought, that is so cool. So now Heyun is my middle name. That's awesome. I, I'm curious, how did your parents react when you came home and said, eh? Uh, hey, Yoon yeah. is cool, but can can I get an American name, please? Yeah, you know, I don't think they were very surprised because they saw that, you know, school can be a little bit tough for mm-hmm. kids, especially if you don't quite fit in. And I think they really wanted to help me fit in. So they weren't all that surprised. 
So they gave me the name Helena, and that's what I started using, I think, around later in first grade. And by second grade, everyone knew me as Helena. But my parents always called me Heyun, and that's still what they call me at home. Yeah. yeah, so all of my family still calls me Heyun. You know, I, I I don't know if I mentioned it to you, but I've mentioned it on the podcast a lot that we've hosted international kids in our home, mm. and we hosted a, a number of of students from China, and oh, so all all but one of those kids came here and adopted an American name, mm. uh, and and I was always like, okay, but what's 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 your Chinese name? And because mm-hmm. that's your name, and. That's mm-hmm. what I want to use if it's okay, and it's probably because I couldn't pronounce their names correctly in Chinese. But yeah, they would no, always say, "Don't hard. try, don't." Try. <laughs> <laughs> it is challenging, and I totally understand it. I understand that you know foreign names, names from other countries, are difficult to pronounce because every language has different ways of shaping words, and so like a lot of people have a hard time speaking. French, for example, when they're learning French in school because they use different sounds. So I understand it. It's, it is difficult. So um, that, that's really cool, though, that you hosted international students. That's a uh, wonderful thing to do. Oh, it was absolutely one of the, the best things that our family has done. We've met kids, and we've had kids become part of our family, and they are now are living back home in China and Italy and the Netherlands. Wow. In India, and it's just, it was such a wonderful way to, um, in such an easy way to add somebody to our family. All the kids who live with us became part of our family, and they stay in touch with us. Um, a little bit harder with the kids who are living back on mainland China right now because of sure. of uh, restrictions. They're not able to use uh, a lot of mm-hmm. the internet. I actually... Three days ago, um, two of the kids met up, and um, kids are now young women, um, mm-hmm. but they took a trip to Vietnam. Oh, And wow. so I was able to have a conversation, a little video conversation with both of them, and it was, it was really lovely. That sounds amazing. And do you think that someday you'll go to China and visit them? Well, you know, it's, <laughs> it was really interesting. Um, uh, Sophia, the first thing she said is, I, Dad, I want you to come to China and visit me. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, I said, I'm not able to get on a plane and sit for 20 hours right now. It's going to mm. be a few months before I can do that. And she said, what do you mean? And I said, <laughs> and I said well, uh, I had an accident. I, I tilted the phone down and showed her the leg braces. And she's uh-huh. like, what are you? Oh, she like, like, was very... <laughs> She yeah. was very upset and mean to, to spring it on her like that. But um yeah. I would love to visit them in China. Sure. It's uh it is absolutely a goal of mine and um uh, we did promise him if there's a wedding we'll 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 make mm. it over. So that would be a good reason to go. There yeah. You go. Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. That would be so much fun. A reunion abroad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is your fourth book. Um I, I don't know if I asked you, did you always imagine becoming a children's author? I did. I, uh, I've i been working on picture books ever since uh, I began enjoying them around six, seven years old. I won my first story contest at age eight. And so I've been kind of hooked on writing stories for kids since then. But, you know, I'm at work on other things, too, including a novel for grown-ups. So we'll see. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> Boy, what 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 are you you're working on a novel for grown-ups right now? Do you have another um, picture book in the works that maybe we yes. can keep our fingers crossed that you'll come back to talk about? Yeah, definitely. Um, so my next picture book is going to be released in about a year and a half from now, I think. And that one is about the tradition that a lot of families have of removing our shoes before we enter the home. So I wanted to talk about that and kind of make a fun story around that. So that'll be coming out in early 2025. Wonderful. Well, I'm really excited. Uh, Helena, where can people go to find out more about you, find out more about Sora Seashells and Mm -hmm. the Paper Kingdom and all the wonderful stories that are coming from your imagination? 
Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, you can visit my website. If you just type in my name, Helena Kuri, probably the first thing that will pop up is my website. And there's all this cool information there. You can see my books. Um, and also you can see my dog, Sherwin. He's featured on a lot of places on my website. So you can check him out. Yeah. Hey, I just want to plant this seed. Maybe it will grow into something, maybe not. But I think, I think there could be a picture book about a really intelligent and graceful tiger. Ooh, Ooh I like that. There you go. Maybe, Ooh, yeah. All right, all right. We'll keep and, our yeah. fingers crossed. Yes, that's a great idea, perhaps. We've had a really fun time speaking to our friend, the author of Source Seashells. Our guest has been Hey Yoon, excuse me, Helena <laughs> Hey Yoon Kuri. Thank Helena, you. thanks so much for being back with us. Thank you. What a pleasure it's been. Take care, everyone. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast and will join us for the next exciting episode. If you want to make sure you don't miss a second of the show, please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Stitch Radio, wherever you get your podcasts. And also, be sure to visit readingwithyourkids.com and download your copy of the Reading With Your Kids online magazine. It's free. It's available at readingwithyourkids.com. Just click on our blog. Before you go, I want to make sure that I give a big thank you to my team, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Madison Darius, Soji Franklin, Monica Rivera Sosa, and O'Leary. I want to give a big thank you to my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. And most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.